It's spirits that make men. Not ingenuity and talent. Not, not style and class and education. It is the right spirit. God, when he's looking for somebody, looks first at people's spirits. I was thinking about Paul. Listen to this carefully. I was thinking about Paul. Paul had incredible writings. We preach from him all the time. But in 50 D, 59 AD, he wrote to one of the churches and Paul made this statement. I am least of the apostles. Then five years later in 64 AD, he wrote another letter to the church at Ephesus and he said, I am least of the saints. Now he was least of the apostles. Now five years later, he's least of the saints. And then one year later in 65 AD, just before he dies, he writes to Timothy and he says, I feel like I'm the chief of all sinners. The longer Paul walked with God, the more he served and loved the Lord, the smaller he became. He started out saying, I'm, I'm least of the apostles. Five years later, I'm least of the saints. Another year, I feel like the chief of sinners. What a spirit. What a spirit. And it's spirits that make men. Most people, when they start out with the Lord, they, they, they have a picture of their own uselessness and they come in as the chief of sinners. But then we graduate and we kind of get us a badge in church or something and we become, I, I, well, I'm least of the saints. And then before you know it, a few more years we go on up, well, I, I'm least of the apostles. And we just think we keep getting greater and greater. But Paul, the longer he walked with God, the smaller and purer his spirit got. Because spirits make men. Do you know what gave light in the tabernacle? They would crush olives. And when they crushed the olive, the oil would only flow out of the olive. And then the menorah, the seven branch lampstand, was filled by olive oil. But in order to provide light in the temple, the olive had to be crushed. You see, before God can use you, he has to crush out of you the wrong spirit. The Bible said that we are the light of the world. So we're supposed to affect the world with our light. The Bible said that we are a lighthouse on a hillside. We're secondly supposed to affect our community, our city with the light. And thirdly, Jesus said, don't hide your light under under a, a basket and that's speaking of the light in your own home so our light is supposed to affect the world it's supposed to affect it is supposed to affect the city in, that we are in and it's supposed to affect our home but where does that light come from 
It comes when God has to crush out of us the right spirit. You will, not, you will not ever provide light in this world without going through some experiences that crush you. But out of the crushing will come the oil that provides light in the tabernacle. Jesus said, if any among you will be great, then let him be a servant to all. We don't understand God's prerequisite for greatness. We don't understand that it doesn't start with an arena like this. It doesn't start in a, in a big church like Hillsong. But somewhere God found a man and a woman and he found first the right spirit that he could then open up all of this that he's opened up to. But it all begins with the spirit because spirits make. Jesus washed their feet. The Bible said he poured the water out. The poured out life is the only life worth living. And he poured out the water on their feet and girded himself, the scripture said, with a towel. He tied or tied around him a towel. Do you understand? He could have girded himself with a legion of angels as a symbol of his authority. He could have girded himself with a sword as a symbol of his authority that had a flame on the end, but he girded himself with a towel and poured out water and washed their feet because he was trying to model spirits like me. And make me more like you. Oh, yes, make me more like you. Make me more like you. My Jesus, make me more like you. Oh, yes.
You know that David was a man after God's own heart. Please listen to me now. But the only difference between David and Saul was a difference in spirit. As a matter of fact, if you were looking at raw material, Saul was a head and shoulders above every other man in Israel. He looked the part, he had the looks, he had everything, he had the pedigree, he had the money, he had the power, he had the look of a great leader. And God looked at him and God looked at a little ruddy boy by the name of David. And the only thing David had that Saul did not have was the right spirit. Because spirits make You are the love song we'll sing forever. Listen to this carefully. You can correct, you can be correct in creed, but you can be cold in spirit. I know a lot of people that can quote the Bible from Old and New Testament, and, 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 but, but they can't win their best friend to Jesus. Because it's the spirit that makes men. The, the, the truth was a person before it was a doctrine. Truth was a person before it was a doctrine. And so many people don't understand it's the spirit uh, of a message that touches people. Even more than what's coming out of the head and the mouth, it's what's coming from the heart that will leave lasting results. Do you know why Daniel was so great? When we think of Daniel, oh, I know why Daniel was so great, Pastor. I can tell you, he fasted 21 days. Somebody else would say, oh, I know why Daniel was such a great prophet in the Old Testament. I know, I know. He stood firm in the, in the lion's den. Let me tell you what the Bible said made him great. In Daniel, in whom was found an excellent spirit. Because spirits make men. The right spirit caused the lions to have the lockjaw in the lion of den, den of lions. Please understand, when you have the right spirit, there's a devil, a lion after you. But if you keep the right spirit, even when people are talking about you, even when you're being criticized, even when, when, when folks are, are, are tearing your ministry to pieces, if you keep the right spirit, Daniel had an excellent spirit and eventually it shut, locked the jaws of the lion. The worst thing you can do is stand up and fight back and rail back and defend yourself. The greatest thing you can do, and please listen to me, if the devil can't get you with some wild temptation, if he can't get you in some crazy way to fall to blatant sin, you know what he'll do? He'll infect you with the wrong spirit. Bitterness, unforgiveness, hurt, offense. A old negative, critical, cynical spirit will disqualify. Jesus can't touch it. He looks for people with a right spirit. You are the healer, Jesus Redeemer, mighty to save. You are the love song, we'll sing forever.
Spirits make men. Anybody hearing me out there? Spirits make men. You can, you can learn how to deliver a message. You can learn how to stand up and sing and, and dance and jump. But if your spirit isn't right, it's the spirit that God is attracted to. And if we're not careful, we'll just become a bunch of professionals. And what the world needs today is it needs what we're seeing on this platform. Excellence and yet with the right spirit. The power of God demonstrated in beauty and excellence, but with the right spirit of humility and servitude, not arrogance and pride. And look at me. Come on, somebody. You know I'm telling the truth. Spirits that make men, not ingenuity and talent, not, not style and class and education. It is the right spirit. God, when he's looking for somebody, looks first at people's spirits. It's spirits that make men, not ingenuity and talent, not, not style and class and education. It is the right spirit. God, when he's looking for somebody, looks first at people's spirits.